Welcome back. In this lecture, we will finally reveal the major breakthrough in theoretical computer science that revolutionized our understanding of the relationship between easy and hard problems. Reduction is a powerful tool we are going to need in order to understand what we will learn in this lecture. We discussed the reduction in the previous lecture. Now let's go over it again. Reduce goes from the easier problem A to the harder or more general problem B. Reduction is not about showing that A or B is difficult or easy. It's about showing that if we could solve B in polynomial time, then we could also solve A in polynomial time by transforming input instances of A into input instances of B. We do not need to have the definite knowledge about the efficient algorithms for either A or B. Reduction is transitive. If A reduces to B, B reduces to C, then we also have A reduces to C. We just need two steps of polynomial time transformation. We can write chains of reduction like this. Does it end? Does the chain go on forever? Yes, it goes forever, but also reaches an end. There is always another problem that we can reduce to. And also, as long as we stay in the class NP, the difficulty of these problems does reach a maximum level and stays there. OK, so the grand reveal, the Cook-Levin theorem. The theorem was proposed by Stephen Cook and Leonid Levin independently and simultaneously, which also earned them a Turing Award in 1982. It states, let x be any problem in NP, then x reduces to the Boolean satisfiability problem set. In order to describe their amazing discovery and its importance, First, let's look at what set is. The input of the problem is a Boolean expression E. The decision question is, can we find a way to assign true and false to the variables in E such that the expression is true? Here we have two examples. Example one is satisfiable. We can set x1 as true and x2 as false, so not x2 is also true. And that will give us the first clause as true. The second example is not satisfiable. Note that we have an AND operation here. It means both clauses will have to be true. For the first one to be true, we need to have x1 as true and not x2 as true as well. So x2 would be false. For the second clause, when x2 is false, not x1 is also false. We have a Boolean or operation here. False or false, we still have a false. There's no way we can have both clauses as true. So the second example is not satisfiable. Now back to the Cook-Levin theorem. It states that for every instance of every problem in NP, we can construct a Boolean expression in polynomial time such that the original problem instance has answer yes if and only if the Boolean expression is satisfiable. The Cook-Levin theorem is regarded as the most important result in the history of algorithm research. What does it imply? What is its significance on the entire field of computer science? It means that since any problem in NP can reduce to set, if we could solve set in polynomial time, then all problems in NP are not harder than set. That is, every problem in NP can be solved in polynomial time. If that's the case, then all the hard problems in NP that have haunted computer scientists for half a century do have polynomial time algorithms. 
which also means that P and NP are equal. This theorem does not answer the question whether P equals NP, but it provides a powerful tool such that we can only focus on just one problem. If we can prove the existence of a polynomial time solution to set, then we can prove the existence of a polynomial time solution to any problem in NP. Virtually nobody believes that P equals NP, and a set cannot be solved in polynomial time. But of course, you could be the one proving us all wrong. Since any problem in NP can reduce to set, set is the most difficult problem in NP. In fact, there are other problems that are as difficult as set. These problems are defined as NP complete. A problem X is NP complete. If first, X belongs to NP, so the problem X can be verified in polynomial time. And second, for any problem in NP, Y, Y can reduce to X. The word complete refers to the fact that all NP complete problems are of the same difficulty level, being the hardest problems in NP. That is, they are collectively the ceiling of the class NP. The practical significance of this is that virtually all computer scientists are convinced that NP complete problems cannot be solved by polynomial time algorithms. When faced with a new problem, we must ask ourselves if it is reasonable to hope for a polynomial time algorithm. If the problem is NP complete, then the answer is almost certainly no. Therefore, instead of trying to design an efficient algorithm which does not exist, we can focus on designing an efficient approximation algorithm or solving special cases of this problem using an efficient algorithm. So we turn to the question of how we can prove that a problem is NP-complete. Based on the definition of NP-complete, there are two steps. First, we show a problem X is in NP, that is, can be verified in polynomial time. Second, can any problem in NP reduce to X? This sounds impossible since we cannot exhaust all problems in NP. So what should we do? In fact, we do not need to prove that all NP problems can be reduced to X. The Cook-Levin theorem has already accomplished that for us. Any problem Y in NP reduces to one NP complete problem. Then the transitivity of reduction tells us that if we can show one NP complete problem that it can reduce to X, we can prove that X is also NP complete. Over the past decades, computer scientists have been discovering many NP complete problems. Next, we will show one example of such a proof. First, we use a variant of the set problem that takes a special form for the input Boolean expression, conjunctive normal form set, or CNF set. Next, we use this CNF set as a known NP-complete problem to prove a new problem is also NP-complete. This is the k-click problem. Given a graph g and the integer k, does g contain a set of k vertices that are all directly connected by edges? Or we say, are these k vertices form a complete subgraph? For instance, here, when k is 1, we can have any one vertex as a one click. When k is 2, we can find any pairs of vertices that are directly connected in this graph. When k is 3, we know vertices 1, 2, and 5 form a three click. In this click, all three nodes are directly pairwise connected. When k is 4, the answer is no. We cannot find any four vertices in this graph where all pairwise vertices are directly connected. Is k clicking in NP? Yes, 
If we are given an instance G and a set of K vertices, we can very quickly verify if these K vertices are in fact all pairwise directly connected by edges. Can K click reduce to C and F set? Yes, that is according to the Cook Levin theorem. Because C and F set is NP complete, any problem in NP can reduce to C and F set. Third, is K click NP complete? We need to show that C and F set reduces to K click. In order to show that C and F set reduces to K click, we need to transform the Boolean variables in E an input instance of CNF set to vertices in G, an input instance of K click. Can we relate setting one variable to true in each clause of E to finding K vertices, all of which are adjacent? The idea is to create a vertex for each variable in E and group them together according to the clause of E they come from. We let K to be the number of clauses in E. We add an edge between every pair of vertices except for vertices in the same clause group and vertices whose labels are directly contradictory. For instance, x1 and not x1. Is this transformation in polynomial time? Yes, it is, very obviously. But how does this work? And is this transformation also answer preserving? Here we have an example. The input instance of SNF set E has three clauses. Now we need to construct a graph G. So we create a vertex for each variable in each class. Note that we can have multiple vertices representing the same Boolean variable. We place the vertices in three groups representing the three clauses in the expression E. We now add an edge between each pair of vertices with only two exceptions. No edge connects vertices from the same class group. No edge connects two contradictory vertices, for instance, not x2 and x2. Then this would be the graph G as the input instance of the k-click problem. Now, is this transformation answer preserving? First, if G does have a three-click, is E satisfiable? Note that vertices from the same class group are not connected, so the three vertices in the click must be from three different cause groups. If there is such a click, like in this example, these three points, we can set these three Boolean variables to be true. So this would be true and this would be true, and this would be true. When that's the case, we know E is satisfiable. Second, we need to show that if G does not have a three click, then E is not satisfiable. So now we know we can show instead, if E is satisfiable, we have a K click in G. When E is satisfiable, we know that at least the one variable in each of the three clauses of E can be true. We know these three variables must be pairwise directly connected in G. Recall the way we constructed G. All vertices from different clause groups are connected unless they are contradictory. So these three variables form a click in G. So that concludes the proof. Here is another example. We have another input instance, E. E has three clauses. We can construct a G accordingly. E is not satisfiable. For the first clause to be true, we know x1 needs to be true or x2 needs to be true. If x1 is true, then not x1 will be false. 
If x2 is true, then not x2 will be false. The one of those two clauses will be false. So E is not satisfiable. And when we look at the graph G, we also know that we cannot find a three click. By using such a polynomial time transformation, we have proved that CNF set reduces to K click and thus K click is also NP complete. Okay, that'll conclude this lecture. Hope you feel intrigued and interested as I do. Please take some time to really comprehend what we discussed in this lecture. We will talk more about NP-complete in the next lecture. See you next time.